Hello Legionnaires and welcome to a character creation video. In these videos, I try to follow the character creation process as presented by the game, but there may be occasions where I skip or blend steps when it makes sense. Along the way, I'll provide explanations of the process and talk about my choices. Please note, the characters I create are all organically created. They are viable within the spirit and the letter of the game, but I do not focus on optimization, nor do I get with the whole play against type nonsense. Of course, if you like this video and want to see more of them, please stab that like button and leave a substantive comment below. Be sure to subscribe to the Legion of Myth for more tabletop RPG videos and to be notified of our live stream. RPG Digest is live every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time. In segment one, we provide family-friendly read-throughs, overviews, and fundamentals of tabletop role-playing games. In segment two, we provide potentially not safe for work editorials, opinions, and commentaries on the TTRPG hobby as a whole. And in segment three, we let you join the show to provide your thoughts and experiences. So there's something for everyone, and we welcome you to watch all the segments or just the ones that interest you most. The Friday Night Chill Stream is a group of gamer nerds who lounge around the virtual living room and talk about tabletop role-playing games and the tabletop role-playing game hobby in a conversational manner. Things can get weird. And finally, don't miss Heathen Dog and Friends playing multiplayer co-op games on Thursdays and Saturday evenings over there on twitch.tv slash legion. All right, let's get started. In Mutant Crawl Classics, or MCC, character creation is a very quick nine-step process, nearly all of which is randomized. Newer gamers may not like this heavily randomized aspect, but randomization is simply core to all the aspects of MCC, including character creation. The most important thing to understand is that at this point, you'll be making a level zero character, a character who is barely more than an empty shell, ready to prove him or herself as an adult and a worthy member of the tribe through the deadly rite of passage. Typically, you make four level zero characters in the hopes that one of them survives to reach level one. If you survive and graduate from level zero to level one, that is where you will choose your real character class and earn the majority of your character's powers and ability. Good luck, because it will be worth it when you do. So what are these nine character creation steps? Well, first you roll your ability scores. Then you apply ability score modifiers. Then you roll your initial 1d4 hit points. Following that, you roll your beginning profession and your equipment. Then you roll your burst sign, although I'm gonna move that to another step. You roll twice for additional equipment. You roll your genotype, which is your race in this game. Determine your appearance or subtype, and finally, choose an archaic alignment, which is like a guild or a cult. So let's start with step one and roll all of those ability scores. Mutant Crawl Classic states that you roll three six-sided dice to obtain each of the six ability scores. The result of these rolls are placed in order. Strength, Agility, Stamina, Personality, Intelligence, and Luck. On this slide, you can see a rough breakdown of what each ability score means to the character. If you've played tabletop RPGs before, this will make sense to you. And if you're new to the tabletop RPG hobby, well, congratulations. And this will make perfect sense to you in short order, so don't worry. Okay, let's see what I rolled. For my first 3d6 roll, I got a 13, so I placed that in strength. For my second roll, I got a 6, so that goes to agility, and yes, he's a clumsy guy. On down the list we go with Stamina, 9, Personality of 12, Intelligence is 15, and a Luck of 10. I also went ahead at this time and rolled the character's birth sign, but I'll get into that in a little bit. If you refer to Table 1-1 in the Mutant Crawl Classics rulebook, you will be able to determine which, if any, attributes have modifiers. Let's look at the character sheet and see these modifiers in action. With a strength score of 13, the character receives a strength modifier, in this case a bonus of plus one. In the melee attack and melee damage fields, I indicate the plus one bonus on the character sheet. With an agility score of six, the character receives an agility modifier, in this case a penalty 
of minus one. This penalty reduces the character's armor class from a 10 to a nine, making him easier to hit in combat. This character's initiative rolls and reflex saves suffer a minus one penalty as well. Ouch! And finally, the character's missile attack rolls also suffer a minus one penalty. And this is all indicated on the character sheet. With a stamina of nine, there's no bonus or penalty to hit points or to fortitude saves. And with a personality of 12, there's also no bonus or penalty to will saves. If you're new and don't know what all these terms mean, that's fine. Your Mutant Crawl Classics judge and the other players will happily help you. You'll pick it up in no time. The intelligence score of 15 provides the character a plus one bonus to artifact checks and allows the character to make artifact checks on items up to tech level five. Now, artifacts in Mutant Crawl Classics are the equivalent of technological or magical items. The knowledge of how to use these items, these artifacts, is largely lost, so in order to successfully use an artifact, the character needs to make an artifact check. Mr. Smarty Pants here receives a plus one bonus to that rule. All characters in MCC speak the Newspeak language. It's the MCC version of the common language or basic language from other games. But with an intelligence of 15, this level zero character can also speak one additional language associated with the character's archaic alignment, which will be determined at the end of this process in step nine. Right now, I picture this character as a post-apocalyptic nerd who is sick of being picked on. So while he did some strength training to bulk up, I don't really care about the other exercises. As a side note, I know some of these ability score benefits may seem lackluster, but I remind you, this is a level zero character. If the character makes it through the funnel, the rite of passage, so much more will be added to the character at that time based on the character's level one character class. Anyway, let's move on to the last ability score, luck. Since this is character creation, not a game explanation video, I'm not gonna dive into all the details of the luck ability score. Just notice that this character receives no modifier to luck rolls. The luck ability does state, after rolling 3d6 to determine the player's luck score, roll on table 1-3 to determine the character's burst sign. I know the burst sign is supposed to be handled in step five, but we're looking at the luck ability right now. Let's just get it out of the way. As instructed by table 1-3, I rolled a d30 and got a 12. The character's luck score of 10 provides no bonuses or penalties to that roll, so the final result remains a 12. Table 1-3 tells me a result of 12 means this character's burst sign is the sensor, which adds the character's luck modifier, a big fat zero, to any attempt to search for secret doors. Moving on to step three, the MCC RPG book says to roll the character's level zero hit points. I rolled the required D4 and got a three, not too bad. Since the character's stamina score of nine provides no bonus to this roll, I jot down three in the hit points box. Trust me, a one, two, three, or four doesn't matter. If you play the character cautiously and intelligently, but plan on dying anyway, you will have more fun. Most level zero characters die. That's why you make four of them. Next, I roll for the character's profession. What did he do before embarking on this rite of passage into adulthood? Well, the list of professions in MCC is pretty extensive, so let me break them down for you the best I can. You can be a hunter or a gatherer. Remember, this is a post-apocalyptic game, and this is a level zero character. Be happy you have more than just a loincloth and radiation sickness, though it may feel like that's all you have. Anyway, there's a 50-50 chance, so let's see what I get. An 18 on the old percentile dice means Hunter. Hunter isn't really a class, but I wrote it in the class field for now. If the character survives to level 1, I'll replace Hunter with the actual character class at the time. As a Hunter, this character starts with 1d5 spears. So you can either roll a 1d6 and reroll 6s to achieve a result of 1 through 5, or you can be a super nerd like me and roll an actual d5. Oh, a 4. This character has four spears. Step five states that it's time to roll the character's birth sign, but I already did that. It just seems to make more sense to roll it in step one, although your mileage may vary. 
On to step six, where every level zero character starts with a flint dagger that does 1d4 damage and a water skin. After I write those two items down, I then roll two times on the additional beginning equipment table. I rolled a 75 and a 69, which gives me a conch shell trumpet because uh, I guess everyone needs a seashell horn, right? <laughs> and an antler hood, which provides a plus one bonus to the character's armor class. Awesome, because that'll make up for the minus one agility penalty. Let's look at the character sheet again to see where we are now. As you can see, the sheet is starting to fill up. Notice the weapons this character carries and compare those weapon damages to the character's hit points. Without even adding in the character's strength bonus, that flint dagger has a 50% chance of killing this character outright, and the spears have a 67% chance of killing this character outright. While level one characters have the ability to survive when reduced to zero hit points, a level zero character is absolutely dead upon reaching zero hit points. Look, these level zero characters are so fun to play. And since you typically play them in groups of four, each player at the table has four level zero characters. It's like a pile of roaches trying to make it to the end of a maze in order to find an artifact, return home, and complete the rite of passage. At that point, those characters get to become level one characters, and that's where the magic happens. All right, let's finish this level zero character who apparently collects and blows into seashells. All right, now it is time for step seven, where we finally get to roll up the character's genotype, also known as race, species, or kin in other games. There are four genotypes, pure strain human, mutant, which is really a mutant human, a manimal, which is a mutant anthropomorphic animal, and a plantient, which is a mutant anthropomorphic plant. I am Groot. I rolled an 11, which means this character is a pure strain human. Eh, kind of boring to me because I don't get to roll any fun step 8 mutations. On the other hand, it's a very versatile genotype. So what does pure strain human mean? Well, it isn't relevant at this moment in time. Pure strain humans can actually select their level 1 character class. The other genotypes automatically use the character's genotype as the character class. The various mutations and subtypes provide abilities for those characters. This chosen character class causes a lot of subtle and significant changes to the character, should he survive the level zero rite of passage. The only other character sheet statistic of importance is pure strain humans move at a speed of 30 feet per action. Since this pure strain human does not get to have a step 8 mutation, let's move on to step 9 where I choose the archaic alignment for the character. Archaic alignment is not the same as the alignments found in Dungeons and Dragons or Palladium book games. In MCC, archaic alignment is more of a guild or a cult association. There are two archaic alignments readily available for this level 0 character. The Clan of Cog and the Curators. I decided to select the Curators, and from within the Curators group, I chose the Traitors subgroup. By selecting the Curators, this character receives an additional plus one bonus to artifact checks for a total of plus two. Don't forget, due to the character's intelligence score, he also receives a language associated with the Canton jargon of the Curators. And there you have it. One level zero character ready for the rite of passage the level zero funnel. If the character survives, you'll be more than prepared to select a character class, probably a shaman in this case, as it makes the most sense, and enjoy the true benefits of being a level one character. It took me quite a while to go through each of these steps for this video. With that said, you should know that it typically takes less than five minutes to make a level zero MCC character. In fact, I made the following three characters in less than 10 minutes. You can pause on each one if you want a closer look. All right, let's start with the character we just created here. And then we have a mutant with rocky skin. Here I rolled another pure strain human. And finally, we have a grapevine shape plantian. I'd love to see someone draw that. Not sure I can accurately picture a stompy 
grapevine man in my head. But that's it. Again, if you like this video and want to see more of them, please ninja kick that like button. Leave a substantive comment below. Subscribe to the Legion of Myth for more tabletop RPG videos and to be notified of our RPG Digest and Friday Night Chill streams. And help us reach 4,000 subscribers so we can have another amazing giveaway. We believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds and that the focus of any tabletop group should be on role-playing and having a good time. Thus, the core values of hashtag RPGate are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural, organic inclusion, not forced diversity. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.